Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel. And on this channel we explore colour and line and form. The last couple of weeks I've been exploring flowers and leaves and painting patterns in different ways. This week I've really been focusing on trying to create a, a style for my floral paintings going forwards. And these cherry blossoms are what I've come up with uh, from that exploration. And today I'm going to show you how to paint them. Now my plan for these is to make a half drop repeat pattern. So that's the kind of repeat that you'd find on fabric or wallpaper. And there's a quite simple trick to making these patterns repeat. I'm going to show you that in my next video, but for this one I'm going to focus on painting these flowers. But I want to do it in a way that I can turn this painting into a repeat pattern. So as I'm painting it, I'm going to set myself up for, for that process. Today I'm going to talk through the process of painting the flowers. And if you just want to create a whole page of flowers, then go ahead and just extend this right to the edge of the page. And if you want to, I've got some downloadable line art on my website that you can use to help you with the drawing process. So let's get started. So let me share with you what I'm using today. For the painting, I'm using these four colours. So these are all Winsor & Newton colours. I've got Quinac Credone Gold, but any kind of warm yellow would work. I've got Permanent Alizarin Crimson. I've got Windsor Violet and I've got Prussian Blue. Now quite often if you've got a set of watercolours they don't really come with violet or purpley tones but that's okay because you can just mix your, if you've got a pinky red, so uh, a red that's kind of got lots of the blue shade in it and, and mix it with pretty much any blue and you'll get like a nice a nice kind of purpley plummy colour and you can get a range of colours by mixing those together. It's very hard if you've got like a scarlet, like the colour of this uh, notebook, to get really vibrant and, and nice kind of purpley tones. Uh, so I'd avoid that if you're kind of mixing a purple and I'd go for a kind of colour that's got a lot of pink in it. I've got a little plate that I'm using as a palette and here are my colours already set out. Um, I've got a couple of brushes today. Um, I am using this brush which I've got which is new to me which is the Princeton Neptune brush. This is a 10. Um, I'm quite liking it because it, it gives me kind of lots of control because it's got a nice fine point but it can also kind of cover big areas. So I'm still working with that one and kind of getting to know it. And then because I want to paint lots of fine lines today I've got a, a brush which is called a rigger. This is a size 3 and you can get some really really fine lines and lots of kind of control with it. Um, I've got a pencil, so I'm going to do some sketching first, and I've also got my kneaded eraser to get rid of any pencil marks. I've got my little sketchbook here, I'm just going to um, show you some uh, of the kind of flower shapes that I've been drawing in there, and then I'm working on hot press paper today. The reason I'm working on hot press paper is because it doesn't have much of a grain, uh, it's nice and smooth, um, and that means that uh, when I scan it into the computer, it's much, much easier to remove the background. Often watercolour paper has a lot of texture to it, which is absolutely beautiful, uh, but it makes it much harder to uh, remove the backgrounds when you're scanning things in. So that's why I'm going with hot press paper. In addition, I've got my regular kind of paper towel and a couple of jars of, uh, of clean water. So those of you who saw Tuesday's video will see that I came up with this list of things that I've enjoyed in the floral paintings and designs that I've come up with it previously. So I've got um, repetition, a range of colour tones and values, um, and line detail, and complex structures and interesting shapes, and then kind of simple composition. I think I failed at the simple composition on this one, but I think I might have got the rest. And I've been using these to inform the more recent flower paintings that I've been doing. So I've decided what I quite like is a, a kind of halfway house between an illustrative style of, um, of floral painting and something that's realistic. Um, I've decided that for now I'm not going to be focusing on loose florals, I'm going to be uh, doing ones where I'm being quite careful about the shapes that I'm making, um, but I'm trying not to make them look kind of cartoony. I'm trying to kind of um, give them something of the the realism and the texture and the complex and interesting shapes that flowers have. This week I took a trip to Lauriston Castle and I got some photos of cherry blossoms in their beautiful Japanese gardens. Now the cherry blossoms that I took photos of were mainly doubles, um, so like really frilly flowers with lots and lots of petals. 
and I liked them, but I wanted something a little simpler for this project. So I've included um, some links down below to some of the photos I took on that day um, for you to get inspiration for your own uh, paintings, uh, but I've decided that I'm doing single flowers. So I'm taking inspiration from the colours and from uh, some of the forms, but I'm simplifying them. So I decided that I needed um, some flower formulas. So for the cherry blossoms I've got three formulas. The first is like an open-faced flower, so it's one that's kind of you're looking directly at. And it starts with a circle, and I can put the centre right in the middle. And then the cherry blossoms have got five petals on, so one, two, three, four, five, like spokes out from a wheel reasonably evenly spaced, but if they're not perfect, that's fine. And then each of those is a petal. So far, so simple. I'm going to draw the same thing again, but I'm going to draw it really lightly. And then I can use this light version as a framework for drawing my actual shape that I want. So in the actual shape of the flower, each of the petals comes out kind of nice and round. And then at the top, I'm just going to wiggle my pen a bit. Pen, pencil, whatever it is you're drawing with. And then come back down to the centre. For the next petal, it's kind of tucked in behind that one. Bit of a wiggle at the top. And then I'm going to stop it here so I can draw the next petal in front of it a bit of a wiggle, and then oh, this one I'll bring back down to the centre, and then this one I'll bring out here, a bit more of a wiggle, and let's leave that one there and bring out the next one. So I'm wiggling at the top of the petal, the sides are kind of rounded, um, so I've got a more kind of realistic flower shape here. And then to make it look like cherry blossom, it's got these lovely dark kind of, what are they, stigmas? The, um, I'm going to have to look it up. Um, and then just some little lines joining those onto the centre. And I'm curving the lines ever so slightly just to make them look a little bit more natural. And that's it, that's my kind of first flower formula for cherry blossoms. The second one is very similar and it's just seeing this same flower but on its side a little bit. So for this one, I'm starting with an oval and I'm putting the centre more to one side of it. This time, I want it, I'm thinking about this as like a, a shallow basin and my lines, rather than being straight, are going to be curved. like that. Maybe that one's more straight. So again, these are the lines for the centres of the petals. Um, if you're struggling to do five, you can do kind of six and just do these curved lines that go through the centre, um, well, the, the kind of the centre of the flower here, and use those as a guide. Five's a difficult number to, to do that with. Six is a little bit easier but then you can just use these curves as a guide for where those petals are going to go. So again, I'm going to draw that very lightly. My nice oval shape, centre of the flower, and then one, two, three, four, five curved lines for the centres of the petals. And then again, petals that curve out and wiggle curve out and wiggle, another wiggly one. I'm going to stop that there and then these ones here are going to look very, very shallow. And you can make it look like you can see the edge of the petal curving over by just putting an extra little bit of line in there, but it's not necessary. That's my second flower formula. 
the third one it is like this again, but it's like it, the center has gone so far below the bottom of the flower that you can see um, that you can see the backs of these petals. So we've got maybe an even more exaggerated oval like that, and then there is the kind of the bottom of the bowl and my centre is going to be down here somewhere, like that. So again, I can do one, two, three, four, five curving lines there, and they're going to give me the guidelines for my petals. Now I can start with these ones closest to me, like that, that, and then these ones behind, one, two and then this one on the end would just see the very corner of like that. So they're my three flower types and I'm just going to repeat those over and again and make them point in different directions. I also want a couple of other elements so the first thing is that I want some buds so a nice simple circle I will give me a bud but with the buds you can see like this the sepals of holding the bud in place and they become more prominent so one two three of those and then some leaves and I'm going to do quite thin narrow leaves with little jagged bits on um, let's get that up there and then come to a nice point and that can have a line down the middle something like that and then let's just practice that again Okay, maybe those jagged bits are a bit much. Something like that, something really simple. So now I've got these basic shapes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my watercolour paper and a pencil and start sketching these randomly on the, on the page. Mm -hmm. So here's the one I made earlier. Now if you are thinking of making a repeat, repeated pattern, then um, the thing to know about this one is that I've got this shape that kind of uh, repeats like a like an S curve across the page. So this uh, portion of the page up here is going to meet this portion down here because it's a half drop repeat. So halfway down the page is going to meet with halfway down the page here. And the same here, this half portion of the page here is going to meet with that portion up there. So when I'm placing things at this stage, all I want to be aware of is that if I place a, a motif or a flower or something up here and then one down here, they're actually going to be quite close together on the final pattern and they're going to, I could join them together with a, a stem or something like that. So let's start and I can start with a nice big circle here. I can put one of my sideways flowers here like that and then maybe I need a third one in this space as well so maybe that needs to be like that and the centre of this one's going to be there the centre of that one's going to be there and the centre of this one let's put that up there so I've got a little cluster of three and then um, I, I want I definitely want one down here as well maybe two so let's put another big round one there and then another kind of bowl shaped one here Okay, so I've got my basic shapes in. Um, now I can go in a little bit uh, more heavily and put in the flowers. So let's do this one first. I can put in like the spokes of the wheel, just lightly with pencil, and then draw in a little bit more heavily the flower petal shapes. Now I can take my eraser 
and erase those central lines. And I also want to take it really lightly over the lines that I do want, just to make them as light as possible. And if this drawing process isn't for you, then uh, I will put a line drawing of my own in the uh, description box below that you can download and trace uh, and get the kind of the basic shapes there. Okay, so on here I've got my really light pencil sketch. Um, I don't know if you can actually even see that. I think you should be able to. Uh, but the principle is that I've just done the same drawings that I've done in here, but I've done them uh, a little bit bigger on this sheet of paper, watercolour paper, and then I've gone over with my kneaded eraser and just tapped any lines that looked particularly dark. That's because when I put the watercolour over the top of uh, pencil lines, any pencil is going to kind of get trapped under there. So if it's really light, you won't see it at all. So I'm just going to start painting my, uh, my cherry blossoms and I'm going to do it a petal at a time. If you don't want to, you can kind of do the whole of the centre of your flower in one go. Uh, this is a little bit time consuming, but I like the effect that it gives you. So I'm going to start with making a peachy kind of pink colour, very, very light, very pale. And I'm starting with some quinacridone gold, but any kind of warmish yellow will do. So yellow ochre or raw sienna or anything like that. And then I'm adding some of my alizarin crimson over here. There we go. And where I bring them together, I'll get a lovely kind of blush colour. Now I like that colour, but I want it to be a lot paler. So I'm going to add in a lot of water. And then over here, I want my purple tone. So I've got a nice kind of more dilute little puddle of the Windsor Violet there. But if you wanted to mix a red and a pink and a blue together to get a, a violet tone, you can do that. And then I'm also going to get a more concentrated little area of my uh, alizarin crimson. And I can kind of mix them together in the middle as well. So they're the colours I'm going to need for painting the petals. And I'm just going to do the same thing over and over and over again. So I'll show you one or two. So I've picked up quite a bit of that blush tone and I'm just going to choose a random petal. I'm using the point of my brush to get into the centre of the, the flower. And then I'm going to bring it out uh, up to my little wavy line at the top. So I'm just painting the whole area in that one colour, the blush colour. Now I can go into either my pink or my purple and it doesn't really matter. And if I, if I use a bit of both or I mix them up, then that's okay. And I'm just going to put some dots right at the center of the, uh, of the flower. So that's the pink. I can do a little bit of the purple as well, just to kind of deepen that up in the center. Wash my brush and go into another petal. Now I don't want to do one of the petals on either side of that one. So I'm going to turn my page and I'm going to do this one here. And I can touch them at the center and allow that to bleed a little bit. That's okay. And again, I'm painting up to all of my kind of frilly lines at the top of the petal. And just add a little bit more of that color right in the center. And I'm going to let these bleed and just see what, what they do and what happens to them. All of the three petals that are left on that flower are um, on their next or wet area. So I'm going to leave them to dry, uh, move to a different flower and then come back uh, when those are dry. So for the outside petals where you can see the outside of the flower, I'm going to make that a much darker colour. So um, let's see, that's quite obvious on this one here. So I'm going to use a mix of that pink and purple on the dark of, on the uh, the outside petals rather than the blush color as my kind of base and some of them I'll make more pink and some of them I'll make more purple uh, but then again I can go in with a much more strong color maybe towards the edge there just to get a bit of variation in this shape so that's the process of painting all of the flower petals. So I'm going to just keep going um, 
adding more and then when these areas are dry I can go in next to them and I'll just slowly fill up the whole page. Now I'm still waiting for some of these petals to dry but I've got a few here that are dry and I could paint in the leaves. So I'm going to mix up a colour that I want for the leaves and I want a slightly bluier purple. So I'm going to start with the Prussian blue. Now I'm going to mix in a little bit of the alizarin crimson and that gets me a lovely kind of violet shade. So that's a good base. I also want it to kind of look a little more muted in places and um, kind of yellow is opposite to purple on the colour wheel. So if I add a little bit of yellow in, I will get more of a brown kind of colour. A bit more purple in there. So that just that little bit of yellow is going to give me a kind of um, just a really, really neutral colour. So let's paint this on one half of the leaf and then more of the purple on the other half. And I'm using flicking strokes up the side of the leaf like this. And then I'll just create a nice point. I want to fill it in. And then I definitely want more of this mauvey purple on the other side. So again, I can do flicky strokes up the side of the leaf. And then just very carefully paint around that petal. There we go. Now this first side are dried, but I want to blend them a little bit more. So I'm just going to take a wet, a wet paintbrush that I've, um, that I've dabbed on the paper towel. So I'm not adding any more water into it. I'm just moving around the paint that's still there. Let's get some nice points there. So one leaf and then I want to paint another one here next to it. So another little flick and then use the point of my brush and kind of carefully paint around this petal because the leaf is underneath it. And then on this side, I'm going to add a little bit more of that violet into the mix. Just so I'm breaking up my colours a bit. And I'm going to paint that right up to the leaf next to it. There we go. So I'm going to keep painting leaves where I can, where they're like, um, where they're not impeding the um, the drying of the petals. I've got these ones here which I've sketched in, which are kind of going off the side. Now, if you're just wanting to paint a page full of flowers, then feel free to just paint those off the side. Paint them now; that's absolutely fine. But I'm going to leave mine because I'm going to try and turn this into a repeating pattern. So what I want to do is complete the design in the centre of the paper, but not go over the edges. So any element that's going to go over the edge of the paper, I'm going to leave until later. Now these uh, bits are dry, I want to kind of join them all together. So I've got these little buds that are sticking out here and I'm going to uh, just paint that in and those little sepals as well. like that. Um, and I'm just using um, 
some of that kind of pinky purpley mix that I'd mixed with a tiny, tiniest little bit of yellow, just to make a more of a brown kind of tone. Mauvey brown. And I also start, want to start working out where my branch is going to go. So I think it's going to, um, I mean, you could just kind of leave these kind of floating, but I think it's good to like join them together with a little bit of a stem and just have little bits poking out in between all the flowers. Um, so imagine there's like a stem coming through here, maybe it bends down there and it goes off that way and it'll go off the edge of the page there. Again, I'm not going to paint up to the edge of the page, but I want to paint all the bits in the middle. So. So this is kind of working out where that's going. So there might be a bit kind of coming through here. Let's just put that little bit in there, tiniest little bit there. There's going to be a little bit joining that flower onto a stem somewhere. And then maybe this is going to come out here. And behind this leaf, it's going to go down there. And the good thing about drawing stems and branches and things is they don't have to be nice and straight. They kind of bend around a little bit. Um, I'm going to put little lines across there just to make them look like they've got interesting little knobbly bits on them. And then this stem is going to come down here, join onto that one. They're going to go there, so there's just like a little bit there. So I'm just kind of creating some stems that are sort of joining all these things together. And then there'll be one here, it's going up there somewhere. Oh, and I've gone too far. I'm just going to flick that back a bit. So I'm switching to my rigger. And I'm going to put some um, I'm going to put some lines on the leaves. So I'm mixing up quite a deep shade of mauve with my crimson and my violet together. And you might want to, if you haven't used one of these brushes before, you might want to practice first just drawing some nice fine lines, working out what you can do with it. So on each leaf, I'm going to, I'm going to change the angle of the, um, the pad so that I'm drawing this at a right angle. I mean the right angle for me, not a right angle. And just carefully drawing that down the center of the leaf. And then taking lines from that center, to the outside. I'll do one side first and then switch the angle up a little bit so that it's better for doing the other side. So so yeah that's a better angle for me. And if you don't have one of these brushes, you can use a small brush or you can use a bigger brush that comes to a fine point. Uh, but the benefit of this one is that um, I don't have to keep going back and getting more paint because the length of the bristles holds quite a bit. So I can just keep painting. Now I've added a little bit more water into that mix because I want to I want to make some more detail lines, but I want them to be a little bit lighter this time. And this time I'm doing them on the petals and I'm going from the center to the outside on each petal and just putting three or four stripes. And I'm just trying to curve them to kind of show the, the curves on the petal. But I'm not 
I'm not being too worried about making them like the same. Yeah, they're not like regular and I'm not putting the same number on each one and I'll put two together and then maybe one over here and then maybe on this one I'll have a few more three maybe one here maybe five on that petal and I'm turning the paper as I go so that the angle is right for me Just going to fill in the center so it's just a little bit darker at the center and all of those lines join together. The last little bit of detail that I want to do is all of those little dots. Um, so in these ones that are really open I'm kind of putting them in a rough circle around the center. And I'm using nice dark purple color. The last thing that I'm going to do is to take a white pen or um, some white gouache or uh, something like that and just add in, oh, this pen's not working very well, some of these little lines. You could do this in a colour as well, but I thought the white would stand out a little bit against the purple. So that's um, all I'm going to do with these cherry blossoms. I'm just going to go over everything now, uh, make sure it's completely dry before you do this with my eraser and just getting rid of any of the little sketch pencil marks that are outside of the watercolour lines. So that's the process for painting these flowers. If you stick around for my next video, I'm going to be showing you how to take these flowers and turn them into a half drop repeat pattern. So I'll be working on the same image, but I'll be extending it and I'll be showing you the technical process for painting um, a repeat pattern by hand. So thanks very much for watching today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this and if you have a go at painting these, I really hope that you have fun with it. You can find lots of extra resources on my website. There's downloadable line art for this, uh, for this project and some reference photos for inspiration. You can find me on Instagram at LouRachelDavis. And I do hope that I'll see you again in another video very soon. Thanks very much. Bye bye.